Welcome back to Red and Blue. I am Major Garrett. Well, the Republican presidential field is growing. 37-year-old Vivek Ramawash... Where are we go. Say that, Aaron. Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy, thank you. That's why Aaron Navarro is here. I'm going to get to Aaron in a second, but he just bailed me out there. That's what I appreciate him for. Announced he's joining the race for the White House. He's a biotech entrepreneur, and he's known in conservative circles for his book, Woke Inc. Let's listen. We forgot all of the ways we're really just the same as Americans, bound by a common set of ideals that set this nation into motion 250 years ago. And that's why I'm proud to say tonight that I am running for United States president to revive those ideals. Yeah, so the control room is still really furious with me for referring to Aaron Navarro way too early, but I had to because he had to bail me out. Joining me now, political reporter Aaron Navarro. So thanks for that assist. All good. In addition to who he is, it strikes me that what he's about matters. Right. That is to say, he's trying to find a lane that is very distinct and one note right now. Right. And and he, what he talks a lot about taps into some of these culture war issues, but in Woke Inc. and kind of what he's talked about making the circuits a conservative media is uh, environmental social governance, this basically criticism that corporations are investing into the wrong things, more liberal things, more things that have to deal with the climate um, and, you know, responding to climate change. And he's saying it's, it's a direct creating a away. diverse culture with through their governance right. approach internally. Right. All of this is not such about what politicians are doing or saying, how state legislatures are voting, but how corporate boardrooms are functioning. Exactly, and he kind of pairs that with saying that Americans have, uh, in his launch video, he talks about how Americans have lost their national identity. They've gone to secular religions is what he talked about, kind of referencing uh, critical race theory and a lot of the, the red meat issues that conservatives have been talking about lately. So. And then now he's the third candidate to jump mm -hmm. into this Republican primary that's expected to be crowded and uh, has a lot of money. So we'll see with him. We'll see what happens. Sure. But you've got some reporting on one of the key aspects of the year before any presidential campaign. What do I mean by that? You begin to try to vacuum up dollars if you have any intentions, because your intentions are going to be driven by how well or poorly you vacuum up dollars. Talk about donor meetings this week. That's right. So this Thursday kind of kicks off one of three notable donor retreats, donor gatherings that I'm watching. Uh, this all Thursday, in Republican circles. All in Republican circles. So former President Trump is hosting one in West Palm Beach on Thursday, kind of like a candlelight dinner with supporters, donors. The next day, down the street, his potential primary rival, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, is hosting a week-long retreat with donors and supporters. I've been told by people familiar with the event planning, at least 150 are going to be in attendance. He held something like this last year where we saw Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders, then a candidate for Arkansas governor. She was there. Uh, I was told to expect some more big names this weekend. And also just to see which big donors that may have supported Trump in the past are now going to go for DeSantis. And that's going to be a big battle to watch. And, and lastly, uh, on the same day Friday is kind of a donor retreat in Austin, Texas, with a bunch of the other candidates, Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, uh, potential candidates. Right. Um, Nikki Tim Haley's Scott, real. Mike Pence, Mike Pence is Pence potential. waiting, still making a decision. But right. that's being hosted by uh, Senator John Cornyn, strategist Carl Rove, and Governor Abbott, whose name uh, has been put out there in 2024. So it is interesting he's hosting this retreat. But this is another way to show that uh, donors, especially on the Republican side, are open to options that are not named Donald Trump. You mentioned South Carolina Republican Senator Tim Scott. He put out a sort of, hello, I'm here bio video, not announcing anything, but let's right. take a quick look at part of that. Lots of pain, but the thing that emerges from all that pain was faith. That in spite of the obstacles, there's always in the obstacle a seed. And that seed was a seed of opportunity. I'm a guy who believes in the Hail Mary. So I think you're never out of the game, no matter what the score is. If there's time on the clock, you keep playing. So I mentioned the money. Money is also important. But biography is an essential part of any presidential story, successful or non-successful. What's this about? This is Tim Scott both introducing himself to potential voters in the Republican primary and trying to see if his brand of optimism in the Republican Party. A resilience. You know, a resilience, you know, kind of looking ahead his bio, you know, one of the few black Republicans, mm -hmm. but someone that came from a background that many working class Americans can relate to. And this is him testing the waters. He started the listening tour today in Iowa. We'll see where he goes next. Of course, he's from South Carolina, a primary state, and he's been doing events there. But it's him kind of kicking the tires to see if there's an appetite 
for his type of brand of republicanism, both, you know, attacking President Biden, saying he's not doing a great job with the country, but that there is a positive way to move the country forward. And it's going to be an interesting campaign if he decides to get in to watch, just given he's one of the few uh, black Republicans mm -hmm. in the party, uh, given his background and given that he has a ton of money in his uh, Senate campaign coffers that could potentially give him a leg up if he decides to get in. And on the legislative side of things, Tim Scott is the most important interlocutor with Democrats if there is going to be any movement on any kind of police reform legislation at the federal level after Tyree Nichols and all those that predated the Tyree Nichols situation in Memphis. That's right. And and over the weekend uh, earlier, he also posted a video of him talking to uh, other black South Carolinians just about uh, the internal kind of strife in, and when it comes to how education plays a role in how black Americans are treated in the country and how he thinks that, uh, you know, the color of your skin should not matter as much as it uh, matters, you know, the level of education, the quality of education that you get. And that was an interesting one, uh, interesting video he put on Twitter, kind of tapping into his identity a little bit. Aaron, before I let you go, you have a delicious detail about just how close Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump will be when they're having these competing donor outreach events. That's How close? Right. When I looked it up on Google Maps, there's about an eight-minute drive, so it could be longer or shorter depending on traffic, but that's that's pretty significant to me, given that these two could really be the top two Republicans in the presidential primary. And it seems striking to me that Governor DeSantis, getting that close, is saying to the former president, I'm not shy about basically coming to your backyard. Right. Everyone knows in Republican circles, for the last four or five years, the fundraising mecca is Mar-a-Lago. It is West Palm That's Beach. Right. That's where you go to show your allegiance to former President Trump or President Trump when he was in office and how you contribute. That's the way to get in and get noticed and be recognized. And DeSantis is not shy now, clearly, about going right there. That's right. And look at the sequencing, one on Thursday, one on Friday. I wouldn't be surprised if you see some figures at Mar-a-Lago, then in the four seasons, Palm Beach. Double dipping right. as it's sometimes referred to. Aaron Navarro, thank you so very much.